Truck drivers, stop. Listen to what I'm saying, bro. Remember when I told y'all that, listen, like the, the truck drivers don't end with a lot of health and a lot of money. So this is going to be talking about the money aspect. It's going to be talking about the health aspect. Maybe if you hear the numbers, you'll understand exactly what type of situation you're in and you'll probably start taking your health a little bit more serious, a little bit more serious. I did not make it up. What, what's going on with truckers' health? We're going to find out today. Stay tuned. Stay to the end. Hit the sub button and hit the like button. Let's go. Tracy McRae. We see them every day on highways and interstates behind the wheel of a semi-truck delivering goods all across America. We're talking, of course, about truck drivers. What you may not realize is that being a long-haul trucker is one of the unhealthiest jobs in America. Hmm. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, 7 out of 10 long-haul truck drivers are obese. That's more than double the rate of... 7 out of 10 is obese. 7 out of 10. That's insane. It's insane. I know y'all going to miss a whole bunch of relevant things like, this is the reason. Listen, bro, there's a lot of reasons. But it's scary, man. 7 out of 10. Other U.S. adult workers. Obesity can lead to a wide range of health problems, including diabetes and heart disease. So what can be done to help people with sedentary jobs, like truck drivers, and to help them stay healthy? Here to discuss is Dr. Clayton Cole, Chief Preventative and Occupation... Chief of Preventative and Occupational yeah, Medicine at Mayo Clinic. Welcome back to the program, Dr. Cole. It's nice oh, to have you. you. Nice to be here. So why the interest in studying long-haul truck drivers? Well, I think that we know that... Um, why do you even care? <laughs> we don't care about truckers. Why do you care about truckers? What's the point? What's your aim here is more the question. Like, what, 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 what are you doing? Trucking in, uh, touches every bit of our lives, whether we Facts. put our kids on a school bus in the morning uh, or pick up goods still. and services from the local variety store. Um, it's been hauled by a, touched by a truck. And, uh, and obviously, uh, we need drivers to move, uh, uh, essentially move America forward. Um, uh, everything from tank trucks to, you know, to your local delivery truck for uh, a restaurant or a store. Um, drivers are in very tight demand right now. Um, and particularly finding uh, drivers and pay that us. are dependable, that are healthy, and um, obviously when something comes up that is put healthy food uh, in the truck stops, health concern, it makes I a go difference off. to I the go motor right carriers. Now. In other words, the employers of these vehicles, because you know there's obviously liability that goes with that. So, so in general, um, you know, uh, trucking is a is an incredibly important thing to all of us and the health of those drivers is important to us at Mayo Clinic. So Dr. Cole, uh, truckers have already been around since time immemorial. What's the recent interest been? Has, has there been a spike in problems amongst truckers? And that's a good question. They've been around. You've been not caring. You've been not caring. You've been, hey, get out the way. Move. You're messing up the road, the whole lot of you. You know, y'all, y'all been hating us. Why are you interested now, Jimmy? Hmm? Why you care about us now? That's a good question. Ahmed or, or whatever this dude's name is. Because why is this happening? Yeah, uh, uh, about five years ago so or so, the agency that, that governs commercial truck and bus drivers called the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration um, began to really study this more and found that the actual fatality rates were going up slightly rather than down. Um, as part of that effort to try to control that, they made a, a, a sort of a wholesale set of regulatory changes, which included how the medical exam was being performed. Um, to that end, what they did was they required that any truck driver who would see a medical examiner to get certified to drive medically would have to see an examiner that had passed an approved course and then took a secure examination and passed that and, and were placed on a registry called the National Registry of Certified Medicine. In other words, they, they start screaming harder. Nothing to help people. We need to figure out a way to exclude the fat ones. That's basically what he just said. We need to figure out a way to stop them from lying about their health card. We need to get rid of their jobs instead of help them. That's exactly what he just said. He didn't say there was a program when you screen out the fat ones to get them back in health. No, he said, kick them out. Take their money. That's basically what he's talking about. That's insanity. How about 
we start telling the truck stops to stop putting the freaking Wendy's in every freaking truck stop. Oh, well, the trucker got a chance to make their own decisions. The truck ain't allowed to go nowhere. How about every healthy food place not say no to trucks? Oh, well, you should, you know, you should, you should, you should uh, bring your own food. On what time schedule? Most trucks don't have a time schedule to be stopping. Come on, man. It's, it's not the planned food. It's the, oh, I'm hungry. You done double booked me, so I just got to stop and get something to eat. That's what's killing us. But I digress medical examiners it, it increased the regulation and the goal was to make it safer on the roads in the future so to be a so to be a trucker do you need to have a physical test then you look at their you mentioned obesity are you checking their vision for example um correct they have to meet certain uh visual acuity requirements uh they uh certainly if they have uh signs or symptoms consistent with things such as obstructive sleep apnea which are typically associated with uh, people who are obese. Big necks. Um, these are all things that potentially could affect safety on the road by being overly tired and, and fall asleep at the wheel. And there's been a number of uh, nationally noted uh, accidents out there with fa- uh, fatalities. Which you touched on. None of the regime. None of the regime. Stuffing the dirty food down our throats. Everywhere we go. It's barbecue this and and sweaty pork chops and honey wings everywhere. Everywhere. They're at, it's, and it's everywhere. Or the depression from the money not being here. So dude says, screw it, I'm going to make myself feel good. I'm going to get some hot wings. There's so many more compounding issues here. Not just the truckers are wrong and fat. That's what we're doing. Oh, it's the truckers' fault. There's a real reason why they're depressed. How about how about you stop doing all these four o'clock appointments? I'm sorry, this is triggering me, man. I'm about to go off, bro. I'm about to go off on this, but I really am, dog. Uh, due to, for example, obstructive sleep apnea. So, as examiners uh, here at Mayo Clinic, we look at drivers um, and actually have taught one of the courses across the country, and we've actually trained about ten percent of the. Uh, examiners across the country to really look for how to do a forensic evaluation and and to really make sure that the drivers that we are certifying are safe to be on the road. See, he, he's not trying to help you, bro. He's trying to ruin. He's trying to take your your cart away. <laughs> this is this is exactly what happens, man. It's never a. It's never. If you're having a driver shortage, why are we discussing tightening? I just don't understand, bro. Give me one program you got to help the driver. These, they're all in cahoots, man. They're all in cahoots. So now the dude comes into driving at at, at a, a normal weight. The programs that they have in the DM schedule and all this other stuff, he starts gaining weight. He gives you 10 years of service, bro. Move in America. And he, you're here to see if he gets too big, take away his freaking career. That's what that guy's there for. He's the enemy, bro. He's the enemy. Nice, mild-mannered, oh, we should do this. He wants you to start, die from starvation. That's what that guy wants. Oh, it gets me going. It gets me going, bro, because this ain't about helping drivers at all. This is about weeding out, screening, and excluding drivers for getting big because of the policies that trucking put forward. That's what it is. The safety part is, of course, of great concern because we're on the road with these truck drivers. But the bigger picture, too, is that uh, a lot of Americans have sedentary jobs. So the health um, implications can be similar. True. Only the difference is, is that in this particular case that there's significant amount of stress. And um, when I say that, um, a driver can be perfectly on time, but the problem is is they may show up at their destination and someone's not there to unlock a gate or open a door or et cetera, or- Facts. But we're only talking about the drivers. How about we talk about the, the places that are doing this? How come they're not in the conversation? Because they're a higher class. That's why. They're freaking movers and shakers, and you're a piece of junk. You're a piece of crap. I'm trying not to cuss because he's pulling a lot of stuff out of me right now. 
but let's just regulate the driver. Not the shipper, not the appointment time, not the multi billion dollar industry that could just pick a healthier choice in the place. Let's not talk about them. Let's talk about the driver. Overregulate, 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 overregulate. We have a thousand freaking things we can get hit for by DOT. Why the DM is still trying to drive us over our time to get hit by DOT. Then I got to watch out, make sure my truck is okay. And then after I do all this stressful stuff at the end of the day, I'm supposed to make a flambe with all organic beats in it? Man, stop, bro. Stop it, man. It don't make no sense. For, uh, what's been told to us by uh, commercial truck drivers that we've uh, had actually at our courses uh, to, to help uh, train the providers is that uh, there's nothing Not the driver. more impotent feeling than having a something going on at home and having your dispatcher send you the opposite direction. So they're at the mercy of the oh employer my God. Oh, oh uh, many my God. times. And it, it many times? All the time. I'm trying to get back to Cincinnati. He sent me somewhere else. My old lady cussing me out. My kid, oh, I miss you, daddy. Huh? So I'm just, I done got an argument with my old lady. My DM giving me stuff I don't want. I'm still leaving my freaking house. I feel bad. And you telling me after all of that, I'm going to deny a Red Bull and a honey bun? Man, y'all lying, bro. Y'all on drugs. It, it tends to be feeling, especially in larger motor carrier uh, organizations, that they're just a number. So mental health they are. is part of this as well. Is that part of the screening? or Well, it's not screening, but is that part of an exam? Well, I guess you could consider it screening. You know, when we go through and do an examination on a driver, we go through a whole checklist of different organ systems and, and mental health. He, he, he can't get off the driver. He done said all the reasons why that regime... Got drivers messed up, but let's regulate the driver. Let's let's focus on the driver. That's all we need to focus on. How can they conform to what they want them to do? It's insanity. Health is, is among those things. Certainly uh, individuals with uh, severe depression, uh, uh, psychosis, uh, bipolar disorder. These are all things that we need to screen and I agree with them on that. And make sure they truly are safe. Totally agree on with the you. Road. Um, I guess the thing to think about is, unlike us, that we go maybe on an extended commute if we're in a ma major metropolitan area, and we, of course, whine and complain about that. Take that and times it over a thousand. You know, an eight-hour day times a 40-year career is what we're talking about. And, and that's what really, uh, you know, we're, that magnifies the stress that's on a lot of these drivers. Only to end up broke. <laughs> Only to end up getting through 20 years of it and your company shutting down. Hmm? Your company shutting down, taking your freaking out retirement. You're worried about that. Why are you focusing on us, bro? Focus on the people who made it this way. I don't understand, bro. I don't understand why you're so focused on us because we are the people in the society that you can do something to. That's the truth. So, Cole, my understanding with truck drivers was that they are allowed to drive for a certain period of time and then they have to take a break. Is that still the case or are the regulatory uh, changes happening? Uh, yes, there's been regulatory changes. Um, uh, and and the idea is, is that they don't, much like pilots, they don't want drivers to be at the wheel for ex uh, too long a period of time. The problem is, is the way the payment model is for many drivers, it's by no. the mile. And so if the wheels aren't turning, they're not getting paid. And, and therefore there's that incentive to, um, to be moving all the time and not to take a break. And right, while well, pilot, he does a layover and get a 24 hour layover and he gets $1,000. He gets $1,000 per diem. It's totally different, even though they really beating on these, these pilots. It's, it's, they, about, they stuff about to go down. Because why is the pilots about to go down? Because now they need, dry, they need fly, uh, pilots so much, they're starting to let lower class people in. They're starting to let lower class people in, hillbillies. They're starting to let lower blue collar people get into airplanes. And the first thing they're going to do when they get these lower class hillbillies, rural Americans and black people in there, the first thing they're going to do, they're going to start dissolving all the things you get. Why are they doing that? Because you're not the class that are supposed to get that. Oh, well, why am I not the class supposed to get that? Because these people don't want you living in their neighborhood. They don't want Jed the hillbilly living in their neighborhood. So as soon as Jed the Hillbilly finally gets his dream and he becomes a pilot because they've opened the door finally, next thing you know, you see, why are the pilots, why are the pilots striking? Well, the pilots are striking because they're eroding their pay. You're not making 300000 no more. You're making one sixty. Half the UPS drivers make more than the pilots do. Why is that coming? Because you are the class that I could take your money.
Before, we couldn't take their money because they were in the right class. It's $100,000 to get a freaking pilot's license. Now United is starting to give, give them out to anyone. Hey, man, come down here. If you qualify, we'll just get you in because we need pilots so much. And as soon as they do that, five years later, now they're eroding the pay, eroding the benefits, eroding the retirement now. In the mind. I'll, live, I'll, I'll, I'll let it go. And, and so the, the hours of service rules have been modified, uh, much to the chagrin of some motor carriers, certainly that want to get the most out of the drivers and the drivers themselves. And so it's done you know, at, at peril of those concerns, but in light of uh, public safety. What are some of the interventions that you propose for truck drivers to use if they're starting to have health problems? The driver. I, I mean, they could, it could Quit. work with anybody at their job, but... Uh, what interventions do you have for truck drivers? Yeah, I mean, I think at this point, what we're really trying to emphasize is uh, the idea that you have to be physically fit as a driver. I mean, the drive is not just sitting on a seat and driving. And we try to teach the examiners that we train that um, um, we actually have volunteers and bring a truck and trailer to the course to have them know that getting up into the cab uh, cranking the landing gear on the trailer, opening the van doors on a on a, a van trailer, are all they're all musculoskeletal conditions that we have to think about, and and so having a more fit driver is something that we're emphasizing with, especially the sort of premium motor carriers, that it pays to have a a workforce that is healthier, uh, less liability for the motor carrier, and obviously safer to the general public on the road. Who would have? That's the, oh, what was he about to say? Known that. So next time I'm at the lights, Tracy, I'll be looking up and giving them a thumbs up. <laughs> Make sure. Listen, it, this, this, is, this is what I mean by this. This is what I mean by this. It's, it's you, y'all are sitting back talking about something and you're only discussing. All right, let's, let's be real. Can a driver make better food decisions? Yes, you can. You can. You can make better food decisions. That's true. You can. But what we're talking about is you go to Google, there's three gyms, there's an organic juice bar. You see what I'm saying? So even if you were to make a bad decision, look at all these things to help you. With a driver, it's just Wendy's, McDonald's, Wendy's, McDonald's, Wendy's. There's none of that. There's also... You go to Google, you know you're going to get a good parachute package. Trucking, there's hardly nothing. And if it is, it's a lie, and they can take it away from you. Yellow trucking, pay attention. This whole conversation is how do we get them to, to be more healthy? You know how. You know how. Sleep is a big part of your health, a big part of your stress, and a big part of you gaining weight. How about you stop making all those appointments, 234, 234, 234 o'clock? What are we talking about? You know how, but they're not the class of people that truckers are not the class of people. And I'm not just talking about black truckers. I'm talking about truckers, period. This is a class thing. Truckers are junk to these people. They're junk. And they don't want to spend the freaking money when they freaking got it. But if you run up to freaking Amazon, there's desk that you can, you know, you can run on the treadmill and still do your, it's all type of stuff to make sure you're healthy. But all these people had to do, how do we fix the truckers from messing up? Because we cannot admit that this level of uh, society is messing up and they're, they're working the truckers into the ground and not paying them what they should be getting. That's uh, this type of stuff. It gets me going, bro. It gets me going because they're sitting around having a conversation, right? And ain't a trucker in the room. How are you having this conversation and ain't a trucker in the room? Why? Because we're not interested in what they have to say. They're just a part. They're just a precariat. That's it. That's just that's the people who live increasingly precarious. That's the people that they're talking about. There are the people that we try to get to do what we want them to do. We don't want to hear their input at all. I'm sorry. This triggered me, y'all. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry about this. It, tri- it triggered me. It triggered me. It got me going. So I'm sorry about this. But, man, if you like this type of content, hit the like button. It helps the channel out. If you feel some type of way, comment at the bottom. Get in the con- conversation at the bottom and share this to people. Please share this to people. And don't do drugs.